Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Saturday Anything Goes. Yes, I'm back after being out for a couple weeks while hubby had his hip repaired. And to all of you who wished him well, thanks so much. He's doing his rehab now, and we hope to have him home by Thanksgiving, or at least around then, uh, which is in perfect timing to put up the Christmas tree. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Not putting up the tree itself, but every year I like to add some new ornaments to the tree. And yes, these have been floating around on uh, YouTube, Facebook, and Pinterest. So I happened to have the mini Kirby keepsake dies and thought, well, heck, that looks pretty cool. I think I'll give it a try. And it didn't take me any time at all to make this cute little elf ornament. And inside, some lovely chocolates, hazelnut chocolates. Mm -mm -mm. And they fit perfectly inside. And I want to show you a little trick. You'll notice that I have a sentiment tied on with some of our uh, bells. And you might think, well, heck, every time I, you know, if I want to get in and get the chocolate, I'm going to have to untie all that. Nope. I only tied it to one side. So you open the other side and bingo bobs your uncle. There's your sweetie. So easy breezy. That was a nice tip from a YouTuber. And I didn't write down her name, darn it. But I'll try and find it and um, list it uh, under the description when we're done. All right. So this is the elf one. I thought we would go ahead and make Santa. Because you got to have Santa, right? Hello, Jean. Thanks for joining. So, let me bring in my project box here. Uh, the nice thing about the mini uh, Kirby keepsake dice, boy, that's a mouthful, is you can get two of these cute boxes from one eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Just cut it at five and a half. And it's a tight fit. But it does fit. So let me bring them out and set that aside for now. And I'll show you what I mean. Let me put it this way so you can see it better. So this is what the dies look like. You get a lot. This is the frame for your box. It not only cuts it out, it scores. Uh, making it easy to fold, but then you get all these wonderful tags and you'll notice They also cut out the little hole for you to thread your ribbon through and there's also some little uh, fur branches so you can do a lot with these we are going to use the obviously the uh, main frame I for the belt buckle I actually used one of the snowflake dies and then we'll use this die to uh, cut out our sentiment. And I also uh, wanted to cut out some foil paper to go with it. Just as kind of a, an extra little added sparkle. So let's get to it. Hello, Roz. All right, so let me bring in my plates and I'm zoomed in quite a bit because it is an itty bitty project once you get it cut out. So we'll just lay our paper in. And you can't do it this way, obviously it wouldn't fit. So you kind of just angle it and it's made to fit very well. Uh, and you'll even end up with a couple of inches left, like a two by five and a half inch and you can use that if you wanted to uh, instead of using foil uh, to back the sediment if you want to use the same color cardstock you could do that all right so pardon I know that camera's gonna wobble a little and it cuts like a breeze so you only need to pass it through your die cutting machine once and See what I mean? It cuts like a breeze. Even these little bitty pieces pop right out. You don't have to bring out your dye brush or anything. All right. 
So we'll put that aside until we need it for cutting out our sentiment. And let me show you how quick and easy this goes together. It's such a cute, cute project, and it doesn't take any time at all. So here's where I told you that it also scored for you. So at each of the uh, bottoms of the pieces that flip up, it is scored. So come in here and just fold and give it a little burnish. You don't have to do it heavy because it scores a nice, decent line for you. The other thing I like is, I don't know if you can see it, but it also puts like this little decorative edge on it. I thought that was really pretty. And then these pieces here, uh, you'll also fold. So I'm going to fold mine. Oops, wrong way. Out with the score line and give those a burnish. Now, before... I put the curvature in the curvy box, we will go ahead and put our belt and our buttons and yada yada on it because it's much easier to do it when it's straight <laughs> than when you have it curved, as I found out with my little elf one. Um, so I have already bring my pieces and parts here. So we're going to use Whisper White. This is what I'm looking for. What do you do if you uh, have a lot of little pieces you don't want to get lost? Well, I just put them on some um, post-it tape. And it holds everything there, and they peel off real easy. So these are the pieces that we're going to glue on. You don't want to glue it on these sides. You want to glue it on either this side or this side. And you'll know because that's got the, the little piece. It kind of looks like a handbag. Um, that's the piece, as you can see right here, you want the face to be on one of those. All right, now let's see how quickly I can do this. I cut some of our uh, black cardstock, and this measures about two and a quarter by about a quarter of an inch for the belt. And you don't want to position it right here. That's your first inkling, but if you do that, your buttons aren't going to fit. So you can do one of two things. You can put your buttons on first, or you can just start down here at the bottom. And I use my grid paper to help me line it up just to make sure. And what I'm doing is lining these points up on the grid paper, and that way I know it's straight. If I can see, there we go. And then I can hold this down, put the right way, and uh, I'll be able to easily glue it on. So let me bring out my liquid glue. You could use glue dots for it, I suppose, but I just find liquid glue to be just as easy. And it doesn't take a lot. And then let me get my tweezers out. My hand has really, my hand trimmer has been acting up, probably because I haven't had much sleep. So if I want to get this on straight, I need to use these. All right. And as I mentioned, I'm going to start way down here. And the measurement I gave you for this gives you ample to fit across. And then just smooth it down, bring in your snips, and cut off any excess. I always like to cut it too long, and that way I know I'm not going to have any problems lining it up. Fold that out of the way if you need to. That's another reason why doing it while it's still uncurved makes it easier all right so we have our belt now for the belt buckle and on the little elf we bring him back in uh, or the yeah the elf I did just do a square or a rectangle of the silver foil I decided I was gonna try because I saw another person use it this is one of the dies that's in that same set it's the little snowflake outline so you could use either this one or this one. Doesn't really matter. And so I cut out the belt buckle there. And that is going to sit right about there. And I'm going to glue that down because my buttons I want to ride above that. With my little elf, yeah, it got kind of close. So I decided that doing it this way 
probably going to be a lot easier. And again, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue. It doesn't take a lot. You don't want it smudging all over the place. Now, you either can do it like that if you want, but I chose to do it this way because it just is easier for me to line it up with this bottom line. And I try to get it as central as I can. Just like that. And then I had fun <laughs> cutting this black square. I cannot give you exact measurements. I will tell you I took it from a slightly bigger piece of the black that I had left out of the scrap. Because if you just do it out of the same size, it kind of looks odd. Um, so I just kind of held it up and figured out how much I wanted to cut. But let me see if I can give you a measurement. This is going to be about, I want to say, 3 eighths by 3 eighths. So that's going to be about right. But really, you can start with that and then cut it down if you need to. And again, here I just put a little bit of glue and I'm going to try and lay it down as close as possible so I don't get glue streaks on the foil because they're kind of hard to get out if you get them on there. Oh, yeah, I even got it on straight. Go me. And now for our buttons. And here you will find a pair of tweezers is a must um, because they are very hard to do with your just your fingers. I even tried with the uh, take your pick tool um, with that, the putty end. And it worked to an extent, but I still had problems with it. Now you'll notice I'm doing my middle button first. And if you do your middle button first, it makes it easier to line up the others. And that way you also can make sure that you're not going to have uh, one button closer than the other one. So I'll just put a little dab of glue on there. Or maybe a little more. And we'll line this one up and it's going to sit right above that belt buckle. Because, you know, Santa's a little chubby. He's been on a diet, but uh, he's still packing a little extra there. That's what makes him so soft and fluffy for the kids to hug. And then we're going to put this one equal distance. Oops, move over there. Press that down a little. And that's all there is to making Santa's coat. All right. Now we can go ahead, and I'm not going to curve this one yet. I'm going to save it to last to make sure that the glue sets. But to curve it, it's really simple. You take your bone folder, start at the bottom, and just like you curl the edges of petals, you're going to do the same thing. And do it gently. That way you don't put any ridges in it rather than curves. And you're just going to curve it up. You can put as much curve as you want in it. My elf, I kind of did really curvy. All right, and then I'm going to do this back one. And now I think it's safe to come over here. And I'm holding on to that foil piece because I don't want it to get wrinkled while I'm doing this. All right, so this is what gives us our curviness. And remember, on this one, I made it to where you could just lift that left edge, and that's where your candy is. So we're going to do the same here. Hang on, guys. Sorry. I forgot to turn down my phone. That's probably hubby who manages to uh, somehow redial me four times in a row. Don't ask me. It's a new phone, and he just can't quite get it yet. All right. Just give it a little more of a curve there. And so, now we get to move on to cutting out. Let me put this back. I never can get this thing back the way I had it. I'll just deal with it later. <laughs> because I think I already have... There's my jingle bells. And I can't decide if I want to use gold thread or if I want to use... Uh, linen thread like I did on the other one. So we'll see. I even brought out the cherry cobbler, but I know that's going to be too thick. So you just, girl just kind of likes to have options. So let me see. This is the one I want. 
I'm going to use the oval because the sentiment that I'm choosing for mine, there's lots out there that will fit in that. I, I think on one of the stamp sets, the ho, ho, ho fits. There is, is it itty bitty greetings or something that has uh, ones that will fit nicely within. But I decided that I'm going to use from 12 Christmas for you with love because I'll be giving a lot of these out um, to family as gifts. I like to give them a new ornament every year, so we kind of have keepsake ornaments that have been running in our family for quite a while. If you wonder how I got the little black buttons there, I just took a um, regular office punch. It ended up being the perfect size. So if you don't have a really small um, Stampin' Up punch, that will work in a pinch. All right, let me put that one up so I don't lose it. And I thought for the sentiment, I would use the Golden Glitz Delicata ink since we are going to be using gold foil um, as our kind of second piece. So I'll cut the gold foil in this and then I'll stamp and cut a piece of Whisper White and I'll just string them together. Let me show you what I mean. I am going to actually die cut first because it was really hard for me to, I mean, this barely fits and it's easy to get it cattywampus. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this piece out first before I stamp. And hopefully that will help me. And then while I got this, I might as well cut out that gold foil piece too. Hello, Linda. Thanks for joining in tonight. Hi, Jean. Kathy, welcome. All right, so I've got that one. Oops, come out, you. And you can see it cuts that little hole that you can thread your thin ribbon or your twine or your gold thread through. So you don't have to worry about punching that out or using your pokey tool, your paper piercer, sorry. Better call it by its right name um, to poke a hole in it. This looks a lot cleaner, and that hole is the perfect size. Okay. There we go. And we'll just put that aside. Now, there's my gold one. Let's see if Linda can get this lined up. First of all, I want to see, yep, that's going to be dark enough. Just make sure I load that up with ink. And then line this up. Pardon my head if it gets in the way because I really have to get in close. And I know it's going to run into my four a little bit, but I'm not worried about it. You can still tell that's what it says. So we'll put that aside to dry for a minute because remember your Delicata inks, it does take them a moment or two. Put that away and we'll get out our Jingle Bells. I'm going to use a gold and a red, obviously. And now let's decide, do we want to use gold thread or do we want to use linen thread? I like the gold thread, but it's so light that you almost can't see it. So if I thread this through my hole here, and then I put this one on top. Now I'm just being careful with it. I'm trying not to touch the inked area too much. And yes, we're gonna wrap this around one of those ends, but I just want to see before I go to all that trouble, which of these is going to look better. Okay, so we've got those two. Come on, you flip over. Play nice. All right, so we've got that, and you'll see the reason that I did that little bit of foil is when this one swings out a little bit, it just looks nice. Makes it look finished. And I think I want my gold one first. Yeah, it's the only thing with this gold thread. I'm not very good at threading it, but didn't do too badly with that one. 
Oops, get in there, you. Ah. With those edges, it's a little tricky to hold it sometimes while you're threading that through. Okay. So I've got that. This is what it would look like. All right. So those will hang down. And I can tie a little bow, but let's see if it shows up against the red. I just want to hold it against this and see. Will it show up? Yeah, I think it'll be okay. So we'll go ahead and use the gold thread. The twine worked well on the other one, but I'm not sure with all the gold and the red if that would really look good. And I'm going to cut a bigger piece than I need because <clears throat> goodness knows we get tons of it on the spool. Okay, I'm just going to set that aside. Actually, let me just tie. Let me just tie this down. <laughs> just so I don't lose my bells. There we go. Not putting the bow in yet because we still have to, oh, look at that. See, I almost did it. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to tie the bow yet because we still need to thread it through here. So how do we do this? All right, so that's our front. This is the edge we're gonna leave open for right now, right? Because this is how we're going to get our chocolate um, in and out. So, all you do is you bring these edges up, and you want to line these up. This is the important part. My very first one I made, I totally ripped my paper, this piece, because you don't have a big, uh, you know, edge there. But here's what you do. If you just, and this is why the curvature is important, because if you can kind of squish that down a little, it will fit perfectly and you can draw it down. But that's the secret, kind of push down so that you can get that piece in there. All right, now let's bring our, you know, this is what I don't like about gold thread. It is just so delicate, but we'll get there. Okay, I'm just gonna hold it. And we will thread one piece through here. I know you really can see what I'm doing, right? As I stick my tongue out, make sure I have a good hold of it. And I've got the other piece here. And of course I put it in backwards. You do want your sentiment to show. So let's try that again. You know, maybe I will just tie this real quick, just so it'll lay down. Those bells are a lot heavier than this gold thread, so we'll get them to play nice. Okay, now I can thread this piece from the back to the front, but it just depends on which way your bells are going to twist your paper. All right, now we have it facing the right way. I'm sorry if my hands are in the away gang but just make sure that it's going to sit the way you want it to all right and now I can take and put the other side through and this is important you don't want to just put one side through and then tie a bow uh, because it can make it semi twist if you take the other edge and put it through the opposite way of your first one, that tends to keep it balanced. Okay, so I managed to do that while holding on to both ends. And you can pull it up as much as you want. I try to leave a little bit of slack because you want it to dangle and you want those bells to have room to jangle. Dangle and jangle. All right, so I'm gonna tie it in a knot because we never have to take this off. That's the nice thing about leaving this back piece open. So, pull that down. Wow, that does not want to stay tied. All right, I'm going to do it one more time and see if I can get a knot going that will work. I really did this earlier and it did work. So, if you just got to be persistent with it. Okay. I'm going to do this like I used to help the doctor suture. 
stick the tweezers through the loop, pick up the other end, come on, where's that, and pull it through. Ta-da! Okay, now I think I can tie my bow. Which with this thread is going to be a lot of fun. If you've got a really, um, I wonder if our gold ribbon, that new gold ribbon would work. I don't think it will though because it's going to be too thick. But you know what? I'm not going to try and tie this in a bow because it's just not going to cooperate. So I'm just going to do a couple more knots so that it stays in place. And then I'll cut these and I will put a ribbon on it. But I'll show you how in a minute. Just cut those off. All right. But now we take our heavenly chocolate here and you just slip it right inside. It fits perfectly. Bring this one up and remember, kind of hold this down. Press it down. It has that give in it to where you can pull this all the way to the edge. And that's also why you want your... Uh, to leave room so this dangles so that you can kind of tuck it right under there. So now what I'm going to do, because I got to have a bow, is I'm just going to make a really quick one and we'll use a glue dot to put it at the top of where that sits. Oops. So just make a quick bow. If this was a little bit thinner, I could have just used it instead of the um, gold cord, which is now going to be everywhere. And I'm just going to do a little bitty bow. Don't need much. Thank goodness for my bow maker. Okay. Do that nice and tight. Just a little bitty bow. Don't even want long tails on it. Just a little bitty one. And then let's decide. I think I want to put it, remember we want to leave that part open. So I'm going to pull this dangle down just a little and I'm just going to slip it right there so that that can still close. So where are my glue dots? I'll just put one right on the knot there. Pull this down just a little bit and stick it right there. And that way I still have room for this to close. And look at that. Is that not cute? I like the little gold bow. That worked nicely. I might have even been able to just use that because it isn't that thick. But. That's okay. Anyway, <laughs> as you can see, pretty darn simple. Uh, if you die cut, just sat down and die cut a bunch of these and the little pieces, you could sit in front of the TV and knock these out in no time. And, um, you know, I've also seen uh, snowmen faces. I've seen reindeer antlers to make it look like a deer with a red nose. Uh, pull out your stamps, all your holiday stamps, and just see if you have something that you could use to make a character. Oh, and I saw penguin too. Oh my gosh, the penguin was so, so cute. Uh, but I didn't have a tiny, she used, I think, a very tiny little flower punch for the feet. Um, yeah, I didn't have anything that small. So, uh, but if you go out and look on Pinterest or on YouTube for mini Kirby keepsake, you'll pull up just a ton, a ton of examples of how people have used it to make cute little sweetie treats that you can also tie uh, some string and hang it on the Christmas tree. Or wouldn't those also be cute table favors? Oh, oh, oh. Guess what? You could take a piece of paper. Hang on, hang on. This isn't going to be very pretty, but, you know, if you're having a dinner party and you want um, those cute little name card ones, look at that. 
You stick it right in there. Oh my gosh, how cute would that be? Use our, our smallest rectangle stitch die. It would give you probably enough room to write their first name anyway. And um, that would be really cool for uh, place settings at your holiday party. Yep, yep. You know, the ideas, they come a mile a minute. Anyway, I hope that if you have the mini Kirby keepsakes to die, um, that you'll give this a try. And if you don't have it, uh, you know, it's still out there for sale all the way through the end of the year. Uh, so plenty of time for you to get it and then go to town making ornaments, uh, placeholders, uh, just sweetie treats, any of that good stuff. Uh, and I think it's just, it's fun. It really is fun. All right, so do you guys have any questions at all? Hello, Linda. Thank you for sharing. Jean Shute, watching from North Dakota. How cold is it there? Do I even want to know? Thanks for sharing, Roz. Well, I'm so happy that you all joined me tonight, and um, I think things have finally settled down to where I'll get back in the saddle with doing these every Saturday night. So I will let you get back to your regularly scheduled Saturday evening, and I hope you have a blessed day tomorrow. Bye, y'all.